morning, everybody. And uh, I'm uh, Bernardo Rocco here with the Professor Francesco Porfiglia. And uh, now the, the case has started, so I would like to um, three, three. to have him uh, describing the case uh, of the patient. Okay. It's a. Uh, I understand that it is very challenging case of uh, uh, iliac substitution of. Uh, uh, long urethral stenosis. So, yes. <laughs> please uh, welcome uh, Professor Porpilla and give us your okay. comments on the talk <laughs> on, the, on the video. Thank you, Bernardo. So, first of all, I'm going to like to introduce we're gonna the, pa the case. So, it's a uh, patient with uh, uh, in the past uh, con the underwent uh, con the radiotherapy con the for uh, con the lymph proliferative disease the kidney, con the dialect kidneys, hypertrophic kidneys, a very small kidney, and uh, on the right side uh, he had uh, developed uh, stenosis uh, before, uh, some years ago, on the level of uh, on the, in the pelvic area, and the pre-pelvic area, and they saw con the hyperform con the in the past, uh, con the one anastomosis, con the recession of the stenosis, uh, con the with the uh, anastomosis, terminal, terminal anastomosis, uh, anastomosis, but in the future he developed another stenosis at the level of a lumbar uh, the, uh, level and the below uh, the uh, OPJU and uh, so at this point uh, the considering uh, the quality of the uh, the ureter that it is uh, not uh, the good quality the tissue and is not perfect because uh, he underwent in the past uh, one operation uh, in the went also on the radiotherapy. I decide on the basis of uh, also on the endoscopic uh, the evaluation uh, to replace uh, the ureter with, uh, with the ileum. So the discussion uh, was uh, this, if it's uh, possible to change, to, to do a uh, complete, uh, complete uh, substitution of the ureter with the ileum, <coughs> or if uh, it's possible to do on the uh, only uh, the subtotal uh, the substitution because uh, during the operation uh, I needed to evaluate uh, if the quality of the last parts of the ureter, the pelvic uh, the ureter was uh, uh, good uh, in terms of uh, quality of tissue or uh, not on the basis of this uh, I can modulate uh, my operation. Moreover, there is another limitation that the patients have back on the an uh, implantable uh, uh, prosthesis, penile pen prosthesis. Second, so we have also the reservoir that uh, limits the access second, in the area of the bladder. And, uh, and so and this was another reason why I need to evaluate if the substitution of the ureter can be done and only can the for a, a, a long uh, tract and not and completely. So at this point, uh, the first of all, uh, and I put the patients in the flank position and I start uh, and my, the operation with the mobilization of the, uh, the colon, the right colon. And so, as you can see, uh, the, uh, after the uh, medialization of the colon, uh, in front of me there is second, uh, very, very stick tissue that is very, very very hard and uh, it's not possible to dissect easily uh, this tissue and, uh, and uh, so and, uh, progressively I try uh, to dissect uh, the, the fat around the ureter and uh, step by step and, uh, obviously and, uh, with uh, progressively and, uh, because uh, and, uh, it is uh, and, uh, very very hard uh, and, uh, to dissect and to isolate the, the ureter. I'm noticing that you are using the uh, the Maryland is in it, or is uh, yes, he's not a frustrated. Yes. So this is the usual uh, <coughs> tool that you use when you deal with kidneys, because most of the surgeons now are using the frustrated. I yes. like the Maryland as well. Yes, I am uh, using. I use uh, the usually uh, this uh, PK, and mm. the, so the PK can the now, as you know, can this second uh, instrument can be used only can the for uh, SI now in the new. And the new Da Vinci system, like an XI and the X, and it's not possible to use uh, the PK, and the, but I prefer to use the Maryland because it's uh, and the delicate and the so the electrocoagulation is more precise than uh, the fenestrate. So I think that it's better to use uh, this, uh, this type of, uh, uh, of energy. 
Okay, so the strategy? The strategy is, uh, so first of all, I'm going to dissect the completed ureter and visualize the ureter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I try kinda, to, to free the ureter of, uh, from the, the fat that is uh, around the cover uh, the, the ureter. And uh, after that, I isolate, complete, dissect, complete the ureter. So at this point, I decide uh, uh, I need to to establish to do what I have to do. But the first step is second to establish it. What is the real length of the ureter that I need to to replace? To, to replace. Right. So there is a lot of sticky fat around yes. the ureter. And yes. So imagine that this patient uh, performed before uh, one, the one operation. He maintained the double J for a long period, and this is another point. The th third point is that the patient underwent uh, the some uh, months before uh, one, the one operation in the ureter. So the recession of a stenotic area and the one anastomosis, termino terminal anastomosis. So is the tissue con this, you know con this not a normal tissue con the elasticity of the ureter is not uh, perfect and so con the possibility to consider uh, the uh, consider the uh, opportunity for the patient to perform uh, con the only one uh, uh, segment realization and uh, doing uh, con the terminal terminal anastomosis was not possible and uh, so con the in any case con the uh, the technique uh, should be focused only in the uh, considering the replacement of the ureter. I think that uh, with the different uh, con the, uh, different uh, uh, organs. So also con during the operation, I also evaluated the possibility to do uh, to replace the ureter with uh, uh, appendix or uh, with uh, uh, gonadal vein, but it's not possible to do. And uh, so, as you can see, can now when I change the position of the patients from uh, the flank position, I put the patients like uh, the for a radical prostatectomy. And uh, so, at this point, I dissect the last uh, the distal parts kind of the ureter. And this position is uh, obviously is important to maintain this position because in this position I try you know, to dissect the ilium and kind of so you know, to perform the a ilium rotation. Let me ask you this: Is this the same thing you do for nephroureterectomy? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you switch from the full flank yes. to the full yes. It's better because uh, the if you maintain the same position, I think that the you instrument there conflict. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not comfortable. So look at how the ureter is attached. To the, this is the iliac artery, the common iliac artery, and so the ureter is very attached, and so it's not so easy and not so <coughs> to dissect exactly. And uh, without, it's important to respect the, the, the vessels, the big vessels, and uh, in order to prevent uh, the complications. With such a stuck tissue, I think that uh, artery is a concern, but vein maybe is even worse. Yeah, so it's a concern, but uh, I think that it's a concern, but the concern is especially the vein. I, am, I think that the very problem is when uh, the ureter is attached to do the iliac uh, vein. So in this case, I think that you need to respect a lot and uh, to be very prudent during the decision steps. Because uh, otherwise uh, the laceration of the vein is uh, a very, is a very uh, problems and a very issue uh, during uh, this operation. Because if you have uh, a laceration, alteration, an injury of uh, the renal artery, so uh, the um, uh, iliac yeah. artery, uh, so you can uh, suture, you can, uh, you can do uh, a suture of uh, the the whole of the injury, the area. But I think uh, if um, it is more difficult to, uh, to treat uh, the one uh, the injury for the vein. Sure. What was the most hard part to dissect, this one or the one close to the kidney, uh, for its proximal ureter? Yeah. Yes. So as you can see, this Here. part of the, the ureter is. Uh, 
uh, is rigid and now if uh, look at it's yeah. become a little bit uh, soft and uh, so there is also on the one examination with uh, uh, your heteroscopic the before and the uh, cutting and the, so as you can see and I'm cutting in the ureter and the below the uh, iliac vessel and the, so the quality of the tissue now and is uh, completely different it's more soft and uh, obviously it's rigid around but the tissue the ureter is good and so this this is the reason why I decided to stop my decision here so, d where did you find the right spot to cut exactly? From a preoperative stuff or just watching and uh, touching the tissue? Yes, touching, uh, first of all, the touching mm. and the second, uh, obviously, can the with the preoperative uh, can the assessment with the ureteroscopy, but I think <laughs> that is uh, very important to touch the tissue. Look at uh, the how, how the ureter is uh, soft. No, yep. this uh, rigid only uh, the uh, periureteric tissue, sure. but the ureter is uh, the soft. So I think the the quality of the ureter is good, uh, and look like sure. uh, okay. And now obviously can they clean also the ureter? I can remove the tissue around the the, the, the ureter, and then the I show clearly the the quality of the tissue and is good. Let me just tell to the audience who are following the challenge number three that here we have a microphone in case you want to make questions to Professor Popilia. So now you make a speculation. Yes, I okay. obviously can do a speculation. And uh, so I remove, uh, first of all, the fat around, so mm -hmm. I clean, in order can, uh, to perform uh, can, uh, perfect uh, can, uh, anastomosis in which uh, in, uh, the anastomosis are involved, uh, is involved only the tissue, the, the ureter and not the tissue around in order to prevent stenosis. So at this point, uh, obviously, can they need uh, to, uh, to, uh, to select the, the, the ilium and the so I usually uh, I do this. So I, I, I evaluate the distance of the uh, iliocecal uh, valve and so on the 20, 15, 20 centimeters from the ileocecal uh, valve, and I put the first uh, suture in order uh, to to establish the, the marker uh, where uh, I can start uh, with the suture of the proximal part uh, of the uh, of the ileum. So it's important, in my opinion, to use uh, to assess uh, the realistically to assess uh, the 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 length of the ilium because otherwise second the ilium should be maintained in its uh, physiological position and it's uh, important to avoid it, to stretch the, the tissue <laughs> otherwise second you if you do a measure measure of, uh, 15 centimeters second is not uh, realistic sure. so it's important to maintain the position of the ilium uh, in the uh, uh, physiological manner and so on I think this is important to uh, evaluate the measure the length of uh, the ilium only when the, if the ilium is in uh, its natural position like this sure 20 centimeters then from yes. the ilium sicu wall yes so at this point I put the first stitch right the first stitch is uh, means that this is the 20 centimeters from here I now my I use uh, the, this uh, this trick so when I suspend the uh, distal part of the ilium with a uh, monoc uh, the peritoneum and again with the, the ilium positioned in the physiological side so I I evaluate the real length of the ilium otherwise uh, there is a risk to have a, a, a not a, a, a realistic length and uh, one of the big problems that we have when we do for example the neobladder is to have a, a small neobladder not a, a, a real a big a, a neobladder and so this is the reason why I think it's very important to do this so in my experience uh, with the neobladder, for example, uh, the, uh, at the beginning of my experience, I use uh, the traction of, uh, uh, of the ilium, but now I avoid to do it, the measurements are made in this way.
So, how did you calculate the length of the helium that you want to isolate and use to replace the ureter? I calculate uh, the the length yes. of the defect of the ureter. Yes. So I I calculate and I I imagine that uh, on the 20 centimeters because uh, uh, usually the ureter is the length of the ureter is 25 centimeters. I imagine that I save five or six centimeters. So. Sure. This is the reason why I decided to do it. So it's uh, what I do usually with uh, uh, also con the when I do con the, uh, the urinary derivation uh, and uh, obviously con the when I do an bladder. So I uh, I isolated and I cut the ilum and so at this point uh, is. Uh, I evaluate uh, the length of the helium. The helium is uh, put in uh, uh, in front of uh, the in front of the area of the where we do where the we restore the continuity of uh, the uh, of the um, the helium continuity with the with the suture. So this uh, uh, I move uh, forward the. Uh, I add uh, the, the, the helium and now when I cut uh, the corner of the uh, distal parts of the helium that was uh, uh, previously uh, cut and uh, so I will do uh, the with the uh, stapler uh, and I, will re I restore uh, the continuity with the, with the standard technique. The GIA that you used is uh, it was 4.5? Six, uh, six, six centimeters. I think that is uh, fundamental to use the six centimeters because uh, otherwise uh, is uh, not uh, the, the continuity of the helios is uh, not sufficient to guarantee. Right. So you make a single cut of six yeah, centimeters. Usually two cuts. Two cuts. That right. is better. It's better because uh, I had the experience, previous experience, in which I use uh, one cut, and uh, at the end, uh, the one that you do, the, the transversal suture, the continuity of uh, the two lateral, the anastomosis, or the, uh, the area of uh, the anastomosis is very short. So I think that it's better uh, to use uh, two cuts. I don't know if uh, the continuity between the, do the, the bowel is uh, for 12 centimeters, but I think at that end uh, it will be about uh, 4 or 6 centimeters is guaranteed. Uh, this is, is very important. Look at, I uh, use uh, the same instrument and then don't use uh, the special instrument uh, for handling uh, the bowel. Right. And this is uh, very important to be very, very delicate. Uh, as you know, con the, the whole needle is uh, a little bit traumatic, but as you know, I try to be very delicate. Yes. And so, in this way, you can save like, an instrument because uh, with the same instrument uh, I do with the radical prostatectomy, the derivation, urinal derivation, and cystectomy, and uh, other techniques. So, I use a stand my, my standard technique. Uh, in my standard technique, I use only four instruments. Yes, that's a lot of uh, savings. Yes, such approach. So, <coughs> so it's important this point to, to suspend the helium in order yeah. to have a, a perfect con the combination, a perfect con the overlapping of the lateral face of the helium. Mm -hmm. So we cut. If you have some doubts, it's important to move to rotate the helium in order uh, to avoid to to in uh, to in involve uh, the uh, the the mesum in uh, uh, in, uh, in the suture, so it's important to involve all uh, only uh, the the helium. And so uh, after that, I did the first uh, the first fire. I obviously continue with the second fire. Now, after the second fire, and that is not uh, clearly shown here because for uh, cutting, for uh, uh, showing, uh, for uh, for uh, different reasons. So I, I'd like uh, to show 
uh, how, uh, we, how can we repristinate uh, the continuity of the bubble, like, and then now when the we move, and uh, uh, the the helium uh, laterally in order uh, to perform the anastomosis. Now we are uh, in a uh, Trendelenburg position, and sometimes it's important to continue the dissection of the meson, as you can see, the peritoneum here, in order uh, to have a good uh, mobility of, uh, the, of the, 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 the helium. And uh, so the, I, this point, uh, the I prepare the ureter. Look at now how can uh, we eliminate the, the fat around the ureter. The ureter is, uh, is clean now, <coughs> and so I can do the anastomosis. The anastomosis is uh, will uh, perform with uh, lateral terminal anastomosis, but uh, at the end of the operation, I will uh, remove the last part of the helium okay. because uh, it's important to remove the last part of the helium for two reasons. Because it's important that the anastomosis become uh, quite uh, the terminal terminal sure. anastomosis, first of all. The second is that and the uh, last part of the helium, there are uh, the metallic cliffs, so if uh, the drainage of the urine is not perfect at this point, you have a big risk uh, to, uh, to create, to have uh, the, the stones. And then so at the end of the procedure, uh, I will remove the last parts uh, and I will do the suture with uh, uh, RNA suture. And here is a single or dual running suture? Single, uh, single stitch. All right. Yeah. You are not using barb suture here? No. I, I use barb suture when I do the suture at the level of the bowel. So right. if uh, when I do, uh, when I remove the last parts of the helium, uh, at the end of the operation I use uh, the barb suture. I use barb suture when I do the neobladder, for example. Mm -hmm. Neobladder, uh, the, uh, during the <laughs> configuration of the neobladder, I use uh, the barb suture. You have been one of the first laparoscopic and robotic surgeons yeah. uh, in Europe, in Italy, but you started doing cystectomy pretty recently, isn't it? Yes, I started in the past when I, I performed a lot of radical cystectomy with the laparoscopic mm -hmm. approach, but I think that it was not uh, a safe procedure right. under the oncology point of view. And uh, now I switch when they use when they perform uh, some radical cystectomy, but I am uh, always I have some concern about uh, the oncological uh, aspect, and uh, so the indication uh, for me are very very confined. So it means that usually they I use this technique only when uh, the disease is confined uh, to the bladder. So it means if there are uh, the suspect infiltration of the fat or there are big tumors or suspect uh, positive lymph nodes, I think that uh, the uh, robotic approach is not a good indication because the, to the risk to have a seeding, uh, to have a metastasis, uh, so the oncological safety, in my opinion, is not uh, excellent. So I think that uh, there are, uh, you need to apply uh, the, uh, different uh, principles, oncological principles for uh, the, uh, 
urinary uh, tumors, second for uh, transitional tumors, second for uh, kidney tumors for prostate cancer, and this is a tumor that should be m uh, uh, we need to respect in terms of uh, in terms of oncological uh, point of view, in terms of safety, because. Uh, the risk to have a recurrence is very high thing and if you have the recurrence the possibility to to save the patients and to treat the patients in a radical way is very very low so there is a very big risk of mortality so it's a one procedure that can is very important for patients because they can care the patients and so this is the reason why we need to select the best procedure for him. I think this is a very wise, wise uh, observation and uh, I completely agree with you that it's still uh, not clear. Yeah. And uh, even uh, I think the real advantages of such a reconstructive procedures on the outcome of the patients are probably still not so clear. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that's coming back to the, to the case. So here you decide to do separate stitches rather than a running suture. Uh, let me ask you why you prefer to do a separate rather than a running suture. Well, I think that is uh, so with the running, I do have uh, more risk to have uh, stenosis, I right. think. And this is one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Moreover, uh, the so is more safe for the stenosis, for the anastomosis, because if the running suture, so if we have a laceration, for example, of the tissue, and there is not, uh, you can have a uh, urine leak. So uh, instead, if you do the uh, single stitch, I think that the uh, suture is uh, well, uh, well done. And so uh, also if uh, some stitch uh, of the have a laceration, uh, there is a laceration of the tissue, and uh, obviously and I think that the risk to have a urine leak is uh, more uh, lower. So the ureteral final stamp is still in place and it has no customized with the ileum. <laughs> we just have a cul-de-sac here that... Yes, the cul-de-sac is there, but I live in this situation at, at this point uh, now right. because I'd like to remove at the end after that I finish the anastomosis in order to establish the real length if the anastomosis is well done or not. So I think that uh, this is the reason why I decided to do the uh, asportation of the last parts of the cul-de-sac on the end of right. the operation. So now I move again, I redogging the uh, the robot, and mm -hmm. so I put the patients in the flat position again, and so when I start with uh, cleaning the upper parts of the ureter, and uh, uh, so on the uh, up to the, the pelvis, and I remove the complete the ureter, and, the, and after I will do the anastomosis. The choice of the safe part of the ureter here is, for as for the distal part, based on the feeling that you yes. have. Yes, the same. Okay. The same, so is the elasticity of the tissue. Mm. This is very important. Is the elasticity of the, especially of the ureter. And then now I, I, I remove the, the fat and I test the elasticity of the ureter. And uh, so at the end I decide if uh, it's good to cut here or the two to clean uh, obviously in the ureter also in the upper part. Uh, let me ask you this, you mentioned uh, up front that the patient got radiation? Yes, radiation, uh, yes, he on did. This, uh, this is a very a very important problem because I treated some patients with previous radiotherapy. Yep. So the quality of the ureter is not good quality because uh, the vascularization of the ureter is not excellent and uh, so uh, it's important uh, so the mm, uh, uh, it's important to have uh, the caution in terms of uh, the also uh, the indication because uh, and I think that the reason why the patients have a recurrence of uh, the uh, previously in the previous surgery in which I did the uh, uh, terminal terminal anastomosis is not correlated with the quali quality of the suture that I made but with the quality of the tissue because the, pa the patients uh, underwent previous radiotherapy. Yeah. 
So all this is, uh, and, uh, I think that the ureter that receive uh, the radiotherapy can be, uh, and they have a, a big uh, risk to develop the stenosis. And when we treat one ureter with the previous radiotherapy, is uh, one condition completely different res respect in comparison the standard situation that we treat, like uh, the stenosis after a iatrogenic uh, damage of the ureteroscopy and other reasons. Because uh, you have to consider that in this case the ureter is uh, uh, the tissue con this uh, not good and uh, the quality of the vascularization is not good in uh, in whole length of the ureter, not in a segmental part. Sure. So the disease is not confined to the, the ureter to the in a, in a special line uh, in a segmental area, but uh, the ureter is uh, the disease of uh, the ureter uh, involve completely the ureter in all uh, lengths of the ureter itself. Okay, so this here is, is the pelvis some as very good see. tissue. Yeah. And uh, so I cut again, I remove the fat and so this is the pelvis. Obviously, clean the I dissect also going to the pelvis and in order to have a good mobilization because it's important that the, the anastomosis should be not made uh, in uh, ten, uh, should be uh, made no tension. in tension free. Mm -hmm. And so, this is the reason why I remove also going to the fat and uh, so the anastomosis second uh, that you do when they should be performed in a perfect way. Pretty sticky fat around yes. the pelvis, yes. yeah. Yes. So now the quality of the tissue is good, I think. And uh, so at this point, uh, look at how there is a little bit of tension. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at this point, in order uh, to to avoid uh, to have a uh, kind of tension, so I dissect again the kind of the I dissect a little bit uh, the kidney and move down uh, the kidney in order uh, to avoid to have a uh, kind of uh, uh, to, uh, in order to perform a tension free anastomosis. I understand that the tension was more related to the meso rather yes, than the length yes, of the... Yes, 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 it's uh. true, but uh, as you know, yeah. when you use the staplers for uh, uh, and uh, with this technique, uh, and in uh, many, and also when uh, you do con the neobladder, or when uh, you do con the, the bricker, for example, mm -hmm. the meso is uh, short, uh, and, uh, and uh, usually it's not possible uh, to have uh, uh, good, uh, the perfect length of the meso, and it's not soft, and so this is the reason why sometimes uh, this is important too prolong uh, the dissection of uh, the meso in order to 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 have uh, the, uh, a good length of the meso uh, to avoid the tension so uh, but uh, sometimes if you do uh, the, uh, this uh, dissection of the meso with, the, with uh, bipolar etc you need some time to give some stitch and so and there is a risk to involve uh, big vessels and so Perhaps that there is a little bit of risk and the for and the vascularization of the last part of uh, the the, uh, the the ileum. So in order uh, to avoid this, I prefer uh, in this case uh, to remove the fat around the kidney, and so when I decide uh, to uh, to approximate uh, the kidney uh, to the ileum. It's very clear now, and you should uh, look at uh, gain how this some tissue is uh, completely different. No? Oh, yes. It's more soft than the Absolutely. previous tissue. It's a very tricky operation because it's not very common and uh, I think that there are not so many anatomical landmarks to calculate the length of yes. this, the distance yes. of that, so... I think that this operation uh, is a, a challenge operation in terms uh, of technical point of view. Moreover, it's very important to follow the patients in the yeah, post-operative period. Sure. 
Moreover, there are also con the functional implications, sure. and it's very important to discuss about it because uh, obviously you have to consider that uh, the ileum continue to produce uh, the mucus, first of all. The second one is uh, the, the, uh, uh, the passage of the urine along uh, the ileum uh, uh, can have the possibility, can they give the possibility to have the reabsorption. Mm -hmm. And so con the, there are also con the metabolic and the implication like uh, acidosis. And so you need, the, the, it's important to follow the patients in the post-operative a period but also con the, uh, in the at home because uh, con the special patients have uh, the, a chronic kidney disease like in this, uh, in this case because the creatinine was uh, 1.8 before the operation and the uh, AGFR was uh, 45 so you can imagine that the metabolic implications are very 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 important. How do you suggest to follow the patient from this metabolic point of view? As an example, we used to do hemogas analysis to evaluate yes, the base yes, excess. Yes, it's important to, uh, uh, to assess on the uh, electrolyte every day, second the hemogas analysis, second is sufficient, second the venous hemogas analysis, and uh, obviously and it's important to support with the bicarbonate, with alka alkalinizant, and the the patients sure. in the post-operative period. It's very important. Dr. Sievert, please, if you want to make a question? Yes, Katie Sievert, Germany. I have a question. You implanted to the distal ureter, and yeah. you just mentioned the mucus uh, production. In yeah. the open surgery, we would yeah. never do that. We u usually implant into the bladder directly. Yes. So what is your consideration, point one? And are you placing a transurethral stand? Yes. I, at the end, I... At the end, I I, uh, w the, the reason why I avoid the to do uh, the direct implantation are uh, different. First of all, because the patients had the uh, three component uh, the penile prothesis, and this is uh, uh, the first point. The second one is that uh, when you do uh, the reimplantation, uh, there is a risk to have uh, the uh, reflux, obviously, and the also can if the length of the the of the 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 ileum is second uh, sufficient because usually in order to prevent uh, the complete reflux you need uh, kind of to use uh, kind of at least uh, kind of, uh, 20 me uh, 20 centimeters of ileum and this is another point and uh, the risk uh, kind of that uh, uh, I calculated uh, was this one that. Uh, uh, if I put the double J, uh, first of all, uh, then the, when I do the anastomosis between uh, the ileum and the, the ureter, also the, uh, obviously there is second, uh, uh, a different size between uh, kind of the ileum and the ureter, so there is uh, a big risk kind of for uh, the mucus to pass kind of in the ureter and so to stop the ureter itself. At this point, uh, the, first of all, uh, the we suggest uh, the we use uh, and, uh, we apply uh, the, the, the pelostomy that is maintained uh, for uh, three months. Uh, the we clean uh, every day the, the upper urinal tract uh, in order uh, to remove uh, the, um, the, the mucus. Moreover, uh, we did another thing. So we, we suggest uh, the to to use uh, some drug uh, in order uh, to prevent uh, the mucus production. And another point uh, was this, that uh, if uh, we put the double J, like we did, the double J should be maintained only for a few days, for uh, 10 days, second, 15 days also, only in the for, uh, the, uh, uh, for protecting the anastomosis. Before uh, the double J can uh, create an abstraction, it's not sufficient to uh, guarantee uh, the, uh, the passage of the uh, urine because uh, the usually the double J works very well when you have the ureter, not when you have uh, the ileum. This is a very important point. In fact, uh, after fact, uh, two weeks, I removed the double J, and uh, when I removed the double J, immediately, big uh, quantity There is a small change in the program, so on screen A, is gonna they're gonna perform a radical prostatectomy by Dr. So, so at this point, uh, uh, when I remove the double J after 15 days, uh, we notice that uh, the passage of the urine uh, from the ureter uh, from the 
uh, in, in the bladder was uh, excellent because uh, in the first period when uh, the DBRJ was in place, we had like, uh, 50 percent of drainage of the urine inside the bladder and 15 the pelostomy. When uh, we re uh, removed the double J, 90 percent of the urine passage uh, was second in the bladder. So it means that the double J can have like, an, an obstructive like, the function and is a protective only few day in the first days after it's very important to remove in order to guarantee the passage of the urine. Some consideration comes very easily after your comment regarding the role of detubularization of the of the ileum for the neobladder. And uh, so I think that uh, it's interesting to know that ileum can have a, uh, such a good activity, yes. peristaltic activity. Yes, 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 yes. It's very important, this observation, because now, as you can see, I sure. now I introduce uh, the double J. Obviously, can I, I imagine that uh, the anastomosis that is uh, uh, obviously seen, which the size of the ileum is uh, uh, larger than uh, the, the ureter, sure. obviously they could, uh, could have some difficulties for uh, guarantee the urine passage, but uh, I was confident that the peristals was uh, sufficient yeah. to overcome uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, area. In fact, uh, this my theory, uh, then the, uh, are supported by the, the results because the patients after three months, when we remove the pielostomy, uh, the creatinine is 1.7, the drainage of the urine is perfect, uh, we have not a dilatation of uh, the, the pelvis. So this uh, double J have uh, only one function, to protect the uh, the distal part of the anastomosis, the anastomosis between the ileum and the ureter. This uh, anastomosis is uh, protected by the, the pielostomy. Sure. This is a terminal, terminal anastomosis, as you can see. Sure. And now we just have to take the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And uh, you redock for that? Yeah. So you... Uh, no, you no, I don't redock. Uh, you I, did try, I try okay. to do it uh, without right. redocking. Do you think uh, that with an XI, the redocking would have been avoided? Yes. Look at Sure. Look at it's not easy. So I cut here. And I remove, first of all, like, uh, the, the metallic clips. clips. I do a remodeling with the suture. This is a very important point, uh, in uh, my opinion. I agree. Look at how the vascularization is very good. And so I do now a running suture. And I involve a lot of tissue in order to reduce again the cul de sac. In my experience, again, the, this technique is a good technique, and uh, I think that it's important to follow the patients. And uh, uh, I suggest to remove the double J uh, early, not to maintain the double J inside, in situ, because again, the, for the risk to have obstruction, to have always one pielostomy in order to maintain, obviously, to clean, like in the first days, uh, the, to remove the mucus uh, that is uh, obviously in the, in, the, in the ileum. Another point uh, uh, is to maintain uh, the pielostomy after. Here I remove also uh, the appendix, I did the appendicectomy, because if, uh, obviously, if the patients need the kind of one operation for this uh, 
for this disease is can uh, 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 be a problem is, uh, can become a big problem and uh, so this is another point obviously i remove also this uh, for showing you how the appendix was not to utilize like, and for uh, sure. the uh, uh, substitution of the ureter because it is short not sufficient to, uh, the length is not <coughs> sufficient and so the final uh, view is this so the anastomosis is guaranteed here the peristals isoperistaltic contraction yeah, are maintained and are good and the last part of the pelvis the, uh, the ilium is perfect and so look at the anastomosis and the suture Beautiful. and also the last part of the anastomosis become like terminal terminal anastomosis very very nice so this uh, 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 my my su uh, suggestion so uh, uh, this is uh, the final uh, uh, result <coughs> obviously that we did the, con the, the CT scan with the uh, pelostomy so that was closed and uh, so we did uh, the CT scan and this is the final result. I think that this is, uh, and now the patient is well, the creatinine is 1.7. He take uh, the bicarbonate in order to prevent uh, the acidos, and so this is the result. Congratulations, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, okay. Thank you.